During your flight, you may think that your flight attendant is just the person responsible for handing out your complimentary snacks. However, these highly trained specialists have a lot of information that most passengers have no clue about. While you enjoy the in-flight movie, there are tons of things going around you without you even noticing. Let the hub enlighten you. Before takeoff, please make sure you're buckled in and don't turn off your electronic device. Instead, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. The food. Where would stand-up comedians be without being able to fall back on the classic and relatable bit about the poor quality of airline food? Even if you're lucky enough to be in first class, it's likely that the food you eat in flight just doesn't taste as good as the stuff you eat at home. Well, there's actually a good reason for this, and it may not be entirely the airline's fault. As the plane gains altitude, humidity plummets to less than 12%, making it drier than most deserts. The dryness and the low pressure affects your taste buds in a huge way. This reduces your ability to detect saltiness and sweetness by about 30%. Flavor is more complicated than most of us realize, and your sense of smell plays a huge part in how you perceive flavors. Up to 80% of what we think is taste is actually us smelling our food. In order to get a proper sniff, we need a supply of good old nasal mucus, which unfortunately dries up due to the conditions on the plane, dramatically reducing our ability to smell. This makes food we eat in the air taste twice as bland as if we ate the same food on the ground. Extra passengers. You know that the plane you're riding on is transporting more than human cargo, and the cargo hold is packed full of suitcases. However, there might be a few extra people on your flight, and we're not talking about stowaways. If someone passes away and needs to be transported for burial, it's not like they're going to send a hearse cross country. Instead, the dearly departed is packed on board an airplane in the cargo hold, right next to your suitcase. If it's not an entire human being, it could well be an organ intended for transplant at a hospital near your destination. But what if someone starts out on their journey as a passenger before passing over? The protocol about that situation varies from plane to plane. Some actually have special cabinets in order to hide bodies, but others do not. It's not a simple matter of dragging someone into the bathroom and making it look occupied either, since the person needs to be buckled down in case of turbulence. One flight attendant admitted that when a gentleman passed away on her flight, she and her coworkers simply covered him with a blanket in the seat as if he was sleeping. They didn't want to cause panic so they played out a real-life Weekend at Bernie situation until the plane landed. Have you ever wished you could see the most amazing video content all in one place? Look no further than the premium. You'll gain access to thousands of ad-free videos from the richest, Screen Rant, The Taco, The Sportster, The Things, and more. It's free to sign up, so log on today. Best of all, you'll get the first peek at the newest content available before anyone else does. What are you waiting for? Check out the premium and start binge-watching now bathrooms. One thing you should know about the bathroom doors on a flight is that they don't lock. Oh, sure, they have a mechanism that looks like a lock and sounds like one when you slide it over, causing the light outside to indicate that it's occupied. But for safety reasons, that door isn't really locked for all intents and purposes. It's remarkably easy to unlock a bathroom door from the outside if you're on an airplane, and they're actually designed that way. It's a simple method of sliding the knob into the unlocked position, just like you would inside of the bathroom. Feeling nauseous? If you don't think your complimentary air sickness bag will be enough, make sure you aim for the toilet and not the sink. The sink won't be able to handle it, and flight attendants don't get paid enough to clean up your vomit. They'll end up blocking off the bathroom for the rest of the flight, which is hugely inconvenient for your fellow passengers. And if you must slip off your shoes on the plane, at least put them on for your trip to the bathroom. Those floors are rarely clean, and you can tell yourself that wet spot on the floor is just water from the sink, but we all know it's not. Germs. Anytime you pack a bunch of people into a single area, you're going to get a lot of germs. Flight attendants do their best, but due to time constraints, they aren't able to clean as well as we might like them to between flights. Surprisingly, airplane bathrooms are relatively clean, all things considered. The biggest culprit for germs is the tray table. One test showed that tray tables held over 2,000 colony-forming units per square inch, meaning that the bacterial and fungal cells on there are able to multiply. That's way more than the 265 found on the toilet flushing button or the 230 found on your seatbelt. It might be tempting to plop your in-flight meal on your tray table, but you should probably wipe it down with a sanitizing cloth first. In terms of being surrounded by germs, you're actually better off eating your meal in the bathroom than at your seat. Although, for the record, we don't recommend that. Transmission If you're wondering how your fellow humans manage to infect every surface on a plane with germs, the answer is simple skin cells. 
The average human loses 30,000 to 40,000 skin cells per hour, and on a plane, those cells have nowhere to go. In the United States, about 1 to 2 percent of the population is carrying MRSA, which can not only be serious, but is also asymptomatic at first, meaning that someone may not even know they're a disease vector when they step onto the plane. Researchers at Auburn University wanted to know how hospitable airline surfaces are for germs, so they infected seats with MRSA and E. coli. MRSA seemed to prefer the seat pocket and was able to live up to 168 hours nestled in there. The E. coli preferred the rubber armrest, where it thrived for 96 hours. When it comes to transmitting the bacteria, less porous surfaces mean that there's less space for the bacteria to nestle into, increasing the risk of it ending up on you. So even though there's likely more bacteria in the seat pocket, you're more likely to pick it up on a non-porous surface, such as the metal in the bathroom. We weren't kidding about not eating your food in there, even though there are technically less germs. Safety Measures if your eyes tend to gloss over when the flight attendant gives their safety lectures, you should know that safety is something they take very seriously. There are a lot of safety measures in place that you might not even be aware of. The most dangerous times on a plane are during takeoff and landing, and you'll notice that the cabin lights dim during this time. That is because it gives your eyes a chance to adjust to the darkness, just in case something goes wrong and you need to hastily exit the plane. Just keep that in mind before you flick on your reading light while the plane is in the middle of taking off. The reason they have you put your tray tables up is so that they don't get in the way of you or anyone else trying to get off the plane quickly. It's also advised that you keep your window shade open so firefighters can spot you in an emergency situation. If you have to leave via one of those fun looking rubber slides, you'll want to make sure you're wearing pants and long sleeves, otherwise your skin might stick to the side of the slide, causing friction burns. Sleeping. You might enjoy catching up on some shut-eye during a flight, but it turns out the pilot might as well. In a survey conducted by a pilot's union, 56% of pilots admitted to sleeping while flying a plane, and the co-pilot likely wouldn't be very helpful in this situation, since 29% of sleepy pilots claim that when they woke up, they saw their co-pilot still snoozing. Even those pilots who can resist falling asleep aren't immune to having their skills compromised due to exhaustion. 86% of pilots claim that their abilities to perform their job had been compromised at some point in the last six months due to tiredness. When asked the top threat to passenger safety, 49% of pilots claim that it was their own exhaustion. That is three times more than any other threat mentioned on the survey. Pilots can be assigned rest periods during long flights, but this study focused on ones who fell asleep involuntarily while flying, and the numbers are pretty alarming. Pilot Safety while some pilots can't help but give in to their exhaustion at times, they actually do a lot of things to keep you safe that you probably don't know about. When the plane is getting ready to take off and you're stowing your carry-on safely underneath the seat in front of you, your pilots are going through their own safety ritual as well. It's known as a touch drill, and it involves going through the motions of various flight procedures. It helps ingrain the process in their muscle memory to avoid giving in to panic during an emergency situation. If your body knows exactly what to do, it can still function even if your brain isn't totally focused on the task at hand because of some distraction. It can help you to do something similar with your seatbelt. In the event of a plane crash, many passengers report losing precious time trying to release their seatbelts the way that they would in their much more familiar cars. Practice buckling and unbuckling yourself a few times when you board. Pilots also eat separate meals from each other, just in case one meal is tainted. That way, at least one pilot will be able to continue the flight safely if one of them contracts food poisoning. Water. When you think about all that bacteria on the water fountain at the airport, you may decide to wait until you're on the plane to grab a drink. But your best bet is to grab a bottle of water, instead of opting for some from the tap. Flight attendants reveal that when the plane stops to replenish supplies, the water in the plane is refilled just a few feet away from where the bathroom is being pumped out. And those tasks are occasionally conducted by the same person. During a test of water found on airplanes, 14 different flights were found to have bacteria levels that were 10 or even hundreds of times above that which the US government recommends for safety. And don't bother asking for a cup of ice, since that's made from the same potentially contaminated water. The ice may actually be more tainted, as the scoop and ice cube trays are seldom washed, and flight attendants rarely have time to wash their hands before touching either of those things. First class. If you can afford it, first class gives you some extra leg room, extra time to board, and some premium snacks. There is a rather hidden cost though. Airlines are just banking on you not having to pay it. In the unlikely event of an accident, you're sitting in the most unsafe portion of the plane. 
To determine where the safest place to be is in case of a crash, scientists purposely crashed a Boeing 747 airplane in what must have been one of the most fun science experiments ever. They found that the seats located in the middle of the cabin and those near the rear seem to have survived the best. The crash test dummies in those seats have been tossed around, and many had broken ankles. Provided that they were able to maneuver by themselves or with assistance and get off the plane before it caught fire, it's likely they would have survived. Those seated in first class, not so much. The cockpit was completely ripped away from the rest of the cabin, and the seats located right behind it were incredibly mangled as a result. One of the seats was even found about 500 feet away from the crash site. Time Magazine also reported that first class passengers have a 10% higher risk of fatality than those seated near the back of the plane. Thanks for checking out The Hub, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you on the next flight.